Tonight, the reading of the word is going to come from Mark. I know we all labor, so I'm going to allow you all to sit down. Mark 5, chapter 24, verse 24 through 34. When you find that portion of scripture, can you please say amen? And it reads, So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Thronged, that means a lot of people around. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, have you heard about Jesus? She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. She was moving with the crowd. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you? Everybody touching you, Lord. That's what they're saying. And you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. The truth will set you free. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And be healed of your affliction. And if I could title this sermon today, it will be called, Who Touched Me? There are many of us who wants healing from God. But when he heals us, our belief system is out of order. When he heals us, our state of mind is not ready to receive. When he heals us, our perspective is not ready to shift and accept what the Lord has done. The Bible tells us whatever a man thinketh, so is he. Does anyone in here need a touch from God? Does anyone in here need a touch from God? I stop by to deliver a message, help is on the way have you ever been in a place or a position long enough that you would do anything to come out of it you would do anything to get past it you would do anything to move away from it have you ever been in a place like that take a second and search yourself could you imagine finding yourself at the point of no return you found yourself in that place. You want a way out. But you know you've done everything that you can do in your own power, in your own might. And you still find yourself in the same place. Something is getting ready to happen. Point number one. Our screen is out. This is good. Point number one, the title is Who Touched Me? Point number one, you ready? The word is out. That's point number one. The word is out that the son of God is coming. The word of out that his name is Jesus. Have you heard of him? The word is out that he is a healer. The word is out that he is the light in a dark place. The word is out that he is salvation. The word is out that he is a forgiver of sins. The word is out that he is a friend of a sinner. The word is out that he would deliver us, you and I, from the power of sin. The word is out. The word is out that he will clean up your life. He will go back, not right now, 
not tomorrow or yesterday, but he'll go back in your past. He'll go all the way back. He'll go back deep into the root system. He'll go back into that place where it's been off limits to everybody else. You know that secret place that when somebody touches it, as pastor say, they hit that cavity. He'll go all the way back into that place. Some of us are hurting right now from pain from yesteryear, yester decade. Amen? That pain that we're hurting from, can I get a witness? Do you want a healing touch from God? Because that pain that you and I, if we hold it on to it, that's the type of pain that can't nobody heal it but Jesus. The word is out. Can't nobody reach into a place like that but Jesus. The word is out. You can't hide what's in your past from Jesus. The word is out. You can't keep it away from Jesus. So are you willing to turn it over to the Lord? The word is out. That he has the power to call the blind to see. The power to cause the deaf to hear. The power to raise the dead. The word is out. That he can speak to the wind and say, peace, be still. And the wind obeys his command. Have you heard about a man like that? The word is out that he put the 99 in the fold and he went after the one. He went after the one that went astray. He went after the one that lost his way. He went after the one he came to seek and to save that one that was lost. The word is out that he'll go after a person like that. Or you're lost and you're trying to look like you're found. Or you're broken and you walk around like you're healed. Or you're bound up, trapped up, and you act like you're delivered. Where are you, Adam? Where are you? You can't hide from that man named Jesus. They say, if you don't be real with yourself, who else going to be real with you? God, I'm going to tell y'all something. I know we say this a lot. And, and somebody can challenge me. I'm going to challenge y'all. The word real is not in the Bible one single time. And no additions. Guess what? God came to keep it truth for with you and I. So everything that we need, it must originate. When it originates from that source, it's truth. Amen? The word is out. What are we going to do with this word? Jesus is coming to town. Are you ready? Jesus is coming to town, Pastor Tedrick. Are you ready? The word is out. See, the woman with the issue of blood did not waver when she heard the news. She prepared herself. If Jesus was coming to Tulsa right now, honestly, would we all be ready? And answer that within your heart. Will we be all ready to go on home to glory? We know we have issues. We know we face hardships in life. We know that trials and tribulations may stand before us. And we know no matter where we are, where we stand, or what we go through, or what we may face, we know that we need a healing touch from the Lord. Amen? This word is real elementary. But when you go to God, you can't touch him or come into his presence any kind of way. The Bible says those who worship him must do it in spirit and in truth. So when you seek the face of the Lord, you got to do it in spirit and in truth. When you call on the name of the Lord, in spirit and in truth. When you pray, in spirit and in truth. And if you're not doing it like that, then you want to revisit that. Revelation 12 and 11 says we have overcome him, him being the devil, the deceitful one, by the blood of the lamb, and the word of our testimony. See, this woman, it says she had heard about a man named Jesus. She heard about a man who was a healer. And when she heard about him, she had to go and see for herself. Jesus is coming. We are in, time, we are in a time where bad news travels fast if something somebody do something negative derogatory degraded we'll hear about it just 
like that. Let that same somebody do something positive, something purposeful, something influential, something impactful, something that will affect somebody's life, something that will be productive. You might not even hear about it. Why is that? Good news. It travels real slow, if it even moves at all. People make it their business to hear about the latest update on Buster John and Susie Sweet. That's mess is what I'm talking about. But when you ask them to come to church, when you invite them to share about the Lord, they give you a deaf ear. Can I get a witness? The word is out. This leads me to point number two. Help is on the way. Jesus showed up. He is on the scene. The, wimp, the woman had an issue of blood. She had been suffering in pain for 12 years. With your spiritual imagination, can you imagine that? Suffering for 12 long years. This woman was called unclean. Life was unpleasant for her. She faced pain and she was enduring. She spent all of her money trying to fix her issue. She had the best doctors that her money could buy. Her life was on trial, and she had the nerve to still believe. She was going through for 12 years, and she had the nerve to still believe. She was hard-pressed on every side, but she had the nerve to still believe. Is there an issue in your life, a hardship in your life, a difficulty in your life, a trial that you and I perhaps we may be facing that we've endured through and we have not seen a breakthrough. We have done all that we can in our own power, in our own strength, and we still have not gotten a release. Is there anyone that can bear witness? Has your life been on trial? Have you been tested on every front, on every turn? Have you been tested when you even didn't want to feel like it? Have you been tested when you thought you was going to get the upper hand and you realized you still had the bottom hand? This woman had the nerve to still believe. This woman came behind Jesus in the crowd and she touched his garment. She said, if only I may touch his clothes, I may, I may be made well. She talking to herself. Have you had to encourage yourself? Have you had to encourage yourself when nobody knew what you was going through but you and God? Had you had to talk to yourself when it was just you and God who know what you was facing? Immediately, the fountain of her blood dried up and she felt in her body she was healed. Because she believed that she was healed. Is there a situation that you and I could possibly be dealing with and we're still going through? And when we get in the right place, right time, right setting, right atmosphere, right environment, and we touch and it remains the same. Is it perhaps that we do not, did not do like she did? All she simply did was believe. Against all odds, she believed. Even when she endured, she still believed. And you know what's amazing? It says right here that in verse 26, and has suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but rather worse. Can you imagine doing everything that you could do to make this right? You're giving it your all to make this right. And not only is it not better, it's worse. Come on, did you understand that? Single mother, you've done all that you can to put back for your kids. You even perhaps thought of working a second job to put back more money. And when you turn around, instead of getting better, it got worse. Come on, married couple. You possibly are going to counseling. You're communicating. One of you at least 
doing all that you can do to make it work. And you feel like you're on the right path. You feel like you're on the right track. But when you look around, instead of getting better, it's gotten worse. Come on, child of God. You've given your life to Christ. You came in, you were on fire. You lost your zeal. You were spending quality time with God. Now you spend time with him sparingly. You thought that when you gave your life to Christ, that everything was going to be all right. But when you found out, when you started walking with God, instead of getting better, things got a little worse. Because of her faith, she was healed. The word of God is the word of faith. So faith made faith. That's why I say I carry from faith to faith and glory to glory. When your faith meet his faith, when your faith meet the word, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. When your faith meet that faith, you can be carried. You can move. Because she did not give up, she was healed. How many times have we been so close and we just threw the towel in? We wanted to give up, contemplate and give up, and we went on ahead and gave up. We wanted to let go. All we had to do was turn the corner. Turn the corner. But we did not make that turn. We gave up. And all you had to do was hold on. But do you remember a time when you did hold on? And you knew if you would have let go, you wouldn't have got that blessing. Do you remember a time when you stayed in a race? And if you would have gave up, but you stayed in, and because you stayed in, you got that blessing. Do you remember a time when you had to persevere and you wanted to let go, but you let go and you let God. You let go and gave it to God. You let go and you put it in the hands of God. You let go and you left it with God. But because you let go and put it in the hands of God, you kept going. You got your blessing. Because she was willing to go there. Think about this here. Could you imagine being pressed for 12 years and nobody encouraging you to keep going? Nobody. When, you, when you're going through and you got that person that's going to encourage you, it's a difference maker. When you're going through and you got that cheerleader, it's a difference maker. When you're going through and you got somebody that's going to stand by your side, it's a difference maker. When you're going through. But this woman here, she had nobody rooting her own. Now, I know we ain't always had that cheerleader. I know we didn't always have that person to encourage us. I know we didn't always have that person standing by our side. But we stayed in. Because she was willing to go there. There. This woman was healed because her mind was made up. This woman was healed because she was desperate. She was not afraid. Jesus was her last hope. She tried everything. Has anybody ever been there? Jesus, the last hope. You tried everything. And Jesus is not even offended when we do that. When we have done that. Jesus is not even mad at us when we do that. The word tells us not by my might or by my power, but by the spirit of the Lord. She was healed. I like this part here. When this woman touched the Lord, all these people, we all in this sanctuary tonight. We all calling on the name of Jesus. We all lifting up the name of Jesus. If Jesus was moving through the crowd with your spiritual imagination, walk with me. Jesus moving through the crowd and everybody touching him. Everybody putting their hands on him. But this one particular person touched him and he said, who touched me? All these people put their hands on Jesus. But it was one 
that touched him. It was one that touched him in faith. It was one that touched him with an expectation. It was one that touched him with a made up mind. It was one that touched him that it's my last resort and this should have been my first resort. It was one that got that touch. It was one that had that special touch. It was one that had felt that sovereign touch of grace from God. And when she touched him, God released power. He did not lose power. He released power. He did not let go of power. He released power because she touched him. She was desperate. Jesus felt power go out from him. He turned around in the crowd. Who touched me? The woman was trembling and in fear, but she told him the truth. Jesus told her, your faith has made you well. This is the principle of faith we must take a hold of. Before I keep going on this, by his stripes, we are healed. It did not say we would be healed. Listen, we could be healed. It say by his stripes, we are healed. We have victory in Christ Jesus. We are no longer the vic vic we are not a victim, no longer the victor. We are now conquerors. We are no longer defeated. By his stripes, we are healed. It didn't say we could be healed. It didn't say we should be healed. It didn't say we can be healed. It say we are healed by his stripes. So what I'm saying is when you are healed, you have to receive your healing of here. Your body is already healed, but do you believe? You cannot receive what you don't believe. I know it sounds cliche, but you have to believe. Because when you are set free, when you are set free to walk it out, you have to walk out freedom. It's a process. You are already healed. But the healing, you got to walk it out. It's a process. You and I are already delivered. But deliverance, it is a process that you and I must walk out. And it starts right here. It starts in the mind. Woo, Jesus felt power go out. We have to believe we are healed. And it shall be so. God is ready and willing to touch us as we are willing to let him. Are you willing to lay it all down for a touch? Are you willing to let it all go for a touch? Are you willing to let go of your old ways for a touch? Are you willing to break that stronghold, that strong man off your life for a touch? Are you willing to just get in that secret place for a touch? Are you willing to break loose? Of every weight that so easily besets you for a touch. Because when you got the weights on you, he can't get to you. The weights are in between. So are you really willing to let it go for a touch? Or are you willing to change your mindset for a touch? Who wants to be touched by God? Point three. Point one was... What was point one? Anybody remember? Hey Amen. The word is out. What's point two? Anybody remember? Help is on the way. The word is out. The help is on the way. The word is out. The help is on the way. And now the help is on the way. Help wants to know who touched me. That's point three. We all want to be touched by God. The Holy Spirit gave this to me. We are all here sitting in the sanctuary like I was saying earlier. We can all be calling on the name of Jesus. We can all desire to be in the presence of the Lord. We can all be seeking the face of God. But look at this here. We want to be touched by God. But I stop by to tell you that God wants to be touched by us. God wants to be touched by you and I. All of us are sitting here, but who is the one that's going to touch God tonight? 
God wants to touch you. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. He wants to make a way out of no way. He wants to be there for you. But will you touch God tonight? God wants to be touched by your infirmities. But it's going to take faith to touch God. Because when you touch him, the virtue of him will go out unto you. When you touch him, whatever it is that you need, you will receive. Only when you touch him, only when you get sincere and serious, God is ready to release. Woo. Is there anybody here that want to touch God? God wants to be touched. You have to go beyond yourself. You have to go beyond your expectations and your desires. This woman was facing something for so long that it took faith for her to overcome. We know that faith is a substance of things hoped for, yet the evidence of things not seen. What was she hoping for? She was hoping for a healing. But when you look at her life, when you look at the track record, when you looked at the longevity of the issue that she was dealing with and facing, it appeared that it was not so or it was possible. But she had faith that she would be healed in spite. Faith is the hope of things, hope of things, substance of things hoped for. There was no evidence. It seemed impossible that she will get healed, but she stayed in faith. Faith will carry you. God wants you to believe. Do you believe? It's real simple. Do you truly believe? Do you believe that you have faith the size of a mustard seed? To reach and touch God. Do you have faith to believe that no matter how big or how small your faith is, it still will move if you have faith? But the only way that your faith can increase, the only way that your faith can grow, you have to hear something. It says that faith cometh by hearing and by hearing, not everything. It's a certain thing you have to hear. You and I have to hear the word of God. If we do not allow ourselves to be endowed by the word of God, enlightened by the word of God, enhanced by the word of God, our faith cannot be strengthened. Our faith cannot be built up. Our faith cannot move forward. But I thank God that your, you all's faith and my faith is continuously increasing. Because we continuously stay before God. We stay before God in his word. God can fill us when we pull on him. Or you pulling on him tonight. It's 813. Who touched me? As we settle, I want you to sit there and think that the word is out. God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he can do so much for you and I. He can heal, truly heal, if you believe. He can truly deliver if you believe he can truly renew your mind if you believe the if is what we control can we get on the other side of that if and truly believe God will restore you to your youth if you believe the word is out God can do so much 
for you and I. You truly, truly, in your heart, have to believe. If your heart is hardened, God can give you a heart of flesh if you believe. If you got a stony heart, God can take it out and soften your heart if you believe. If you're not going the way that you know you need to go, God is the potter and he can put you on the potter's wheel and shape your life if you submit. God wants to do a work in each and every one of us and the work is continuous. The work never ends. But you have to submit yourself if you're willing to submit. There, the word is out. This is the word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. If you want a new way of thinking, if you want a new state of mind, if you want to turn away from the old man, do things a new way, then you have to do something. You have to become a part of Christ. If you make up your mind, the word is out. Jesus is coming. Help is on the way. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Everything that you and I do, we have to begin with the word of God. If we enter into a new relationship, if we start a new job, if we're thinking about making a new purchase, whatever it is, if we need to bring new disciplines to our children, if we want to go higher in education, if we want to save money for this, put money back for that, everything that you do, begin with the word. And it say in the beginning was the word and the word was with. That means you're going to carry that word. That means you're going to cultivate whatever you started out here with. That means as you continue on, you're going to keep him in. That means that when it get it hard and it start not look like it's going in your favor, you're going to keep him in it. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with. You are carrying him with you wherever you go. You are carrying him with you on every decision that you make, every turn that you make. You carry the Lord's presence. You carry the Lord's word with you. And because you started in him. And because you carried him, it say in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And then that was in the beginning has now become. It has manifested. You started out right. Now it's going to work out to your favor. And all things work together for the good of those who love. Even though sometimes you want a yes and you might get a no from God. Even though sometimes you want a yes, and he might say, hold up, you're not ready. Even though sometimes you might want a yes, and he give it to you just to show you you were not ready for it. Even though sometimes you want a yes, and you are ready for it, and then he gives it to you so you can continue to advance. Whatever we do, no matter who you are, single parent, draw strength from the Lord. Married couples, keep God in the marriage. Marriage is meant to be done God's way. God brought Eve to Adam. God brought Eve to Adam. Everything in God, it works in threes. It was Adam, Eve, and God. The source of everything. So if you find yourself in a place, if God is not the source, it's already out of order. If you are in a place and God is not the source, get him in position so it can get in order. It's okay if it's not in order. But now that you know, you got to get it in order. 